Hey guys, it's Alex here from Homey. And in this video, we're gonna have a look at contact sensors, or also known as door window sensors. And we've actually written a whole Best Buy guide that outlines pros and cons for all of the different brands that are on the market, or at least the most popular ones. And we've basically highlighted the ones that we would recommend to you if you're looking at adding contact sensors or door window sensors to your home. So make sure while you're watching this video, after you watch the video, or at any point during the video to go check out that blog post and I'll add a link down in the description below. Let's start with what a contact sensor is. They're really simple. Contact sensors are often made of two parts and one part sends the signals to Homey and the other part is just a small magnet. What the sensor does is it measures the proximity of these two pieces. If they're far apart, then an object is open and if they're close together, then it's closed. Now, some contact sensors also include, for instance, a vibration or tamper alarm. And that means that for if you have a door window sensor set up on a window, someone doesn't open the window, but let's say smashes it, then the door window sensor will pick that up via the vibrations happening and you can be alerted to that fact. So great for an additional layer of security. Another great thing you can use contact sensors for is simply home automation and creating some great flows that allow you to be hands off with your smart home. So let's say you're entering a room, the door opens, the contact sensor realizes that, and you can have the lights turn on in that area. And Homey has a special feature called zone activity, which you can use and set up with contact sensors or motion sensors in order to have these flows trigger seamlessly without needing to raise a finger. Now, let me quickly show you how to pair one of these contact sensors. I'm gonna show the Acara door window sensor. I'll hit the plus, search for the brand, and select the device. Now just follow the instructions. So I'll press the button on the top for about three seconds. You'll see the blue light flashing. And then the device is being added. And really quickly, it's added to your home screen. I can head into it and we'll see that the contact alarm is currently set as no. That means there's no contact alarm going on. The contact alarm will trigger as soon as I pull the two pieces apart, you'll see that it goes to yes. And that means that, for instance, the contact is broken. Now, you'll also be able to track your battery status, as well as create your first flows using your contact sensor. And last but not least, let's go one further. You can also track the activity timeline for that device specifically. So if you wanna know, for instance, when people have come home uh, let's say you maybe have teenagers or so and you're trying to track, you know, what time did they come home last night? Well, set up a door window sensor, check your activity logs, and you'll see when the door was last open. Now make sure that you also allocate the door window sensor to the correct zone. I'm going to do that now and I'll just add it to my film studio. Once it's in the right zone, you can start making use of zone activity flows, which is really handy for, well, knowing when a zone is active based on sensor alerts. So what I've done is laid them out in front of me so that you guys can get an idea of size comparison. Now each device has its own pros and cons. Let's start with the different technologies that these are running on. Akara uses Zigbee. Friend also uses Zigbee. You have Fibaro and Aotech using Z-Wave Plus, and we've got Shelly, which is a Wi-Fi connected device. All the devices you see here are directly connectable with Homey, so you don't need any in-between bridge or hub or anything like that. You can connect them up with both Homey Pro and Homey Bridge. The great thing about Shelly is that you can actually also connect it to the new Homey without requiring any hardware. Now, I should mention that the Shelly app leaves a lot of room for improvement when it comes to intuitive user interfaces and basically usability of the app itself. It's not the easiest app to get along with, but with a bit of fiddling, a bit of tweaking, you guys can get it to work. And then the cloud connection with Homey does work quite well. So you can quickly add those devices to Homey when you want to. Now let's talk about some of the pros and cons. The Acara door window sensor has a great price, minimalistic design, and it's really easy to mount anywhere that you want it because it comes with, well, double-sided tape on the back. So you can just stick it on to any surface that you want. Now that could also be seen as a con because it doesn't come with any screws, so you cannot really hard mount it on the location. It is, you know, subject to detachability or coming off or the stickiness kind of losing its grip. 
Next, we have the Door Window Sensor 2 from Fibaro. This has a couple of great advantages. So one, it also includes a temperature sensor. So if you're looking for the measurement of temperature in certain rooms, well, you can use a door window sensor to do two things. One, measure the temperature, and two, also to let you know if the contact sensor is opened or closed. So you can create some really interesting flows that go along with that. Another one is that you get a couple of color selections. So you have a greater selection to make sure that it fits your home. The disadvantage is that it's the most expensive one I have here with me. So take that into account when you're making your decisions. So the Shelly Door Window Sensor 2, well, this has a couple advantages. No hub required to use, so you don't necessarily need Homey Pro or Homey Bridge in order to connect with this device. You can do it simply via Homey and the Shelly app. Another good advantage is that it includes a Lux sensor as standard. And that means that it measures the light intensity in the area it's placed. So let's say you're placing it in a room with automated curtains. You can create flows based on the light intensity received by the door window sensor to set or determine the position of your blinds. Some of the downsides, well, it does have the most basic design of the sensors here, and it's rather bulky. And this is likely because it requires two large batteries to power it, most likely again because of that Wi-Fi capability making it cloud connected. That often uses a little bit more power than Zigbee and Z-Wave. So let's move on to the Friend Entry Sensor Pro. Now, Friend actually has two variants of this. They have the Entry Sensor, the basic version, which is used as a contact sensor, and they have the Pro version, which looks the same, but also includes a tamper alarm. So if you're interested in security, you're worried about, for instance, people breaking in uh, through windows or breaking through doors, it means that you can create security-orientated flows with it that basically give you some peace of mind. So if anything's going on at your home, you can at least be notified about it. And you can also set up alarms and flashing lights if you want to using Homey. Some more benefits include one of the longest battery lives. So it claims about a nine year battery life. And when the time comes that you do need to replace the batteries, it's one of the easiest ones here. It just uses two AA batteries. The others use different types of batteries and make sure to check out the Best Buy guide for information on what types of batteries exactly. One of the main disadvantages of the Friend Entry Sensor Pro is that it's rather bulky. So it's, you know, in line with Shelly for being one of the larger uh, door window sensors that we have here. So last but not least, let's take a look at AOTech. Now the door window sensor 7 Pro, despite the long name, is about the same size as the Fibaro door window sensor 2. Now they also run on Z-Wave, so you can make use of a better range using that technology. It also includes the tamper detection that you might be looking for if you're a little bit more security orientated. And finally, we have the recessed door sensor. This is a different take on a door window sensor. And the great thing about it is that you can actually mount it without having it in view of people moving around your home. So one of the downsides of that is that you do require the right type of door or window, and you should be willing to drill some rather large holes into it in order to install the device. And for instance, I have, let's say, hard plastic as a door, so I won't be able to use this as a recessed door window sensor because, well, you need to be able to drill into what you're installing it in. However, if minimalistic design or at least out of sight, you know, if you don't want these door window sensors to be on the door frame, perhaps uh, your partner or wife is not so happy with that, then this is a great alternative. So you can install this flush and you won't even notice that it's there while it works away and basically gives you the information that you need to trigger some flows with Homey. Now I wanna give special mention to another door window sensor that was just recently launched into the market and it's from the brand SwitchBot. And they have, again, a little bit of a different take on a door window sensor. They've included a motion sensor into the door window sensor. And the great thing about that is it actually knows whether you're coming or going. So based on, okay, if the door is open and there's motion then detected, it knows, okay, someone just entered the room. If the door closes after motion was detected, then they know someone left the room. So it's quite a nice intuitive product. And not only that, you can use the motion sensor that's built into it with Homey to also trigger all kinds of flows based on zone activity. So it doesn't depend on the door or window opening, but just motion being detected and it's all built into one device. Now, I really like that concept. and I think some of the other brands can also learn from that and maybe start combining some of their different devices so that you're not hanging up two or three different devices in each room to do different functions, but rather just one and that does all of them. 
Now, unfortunately, I don't have that door window sensor here with me from SwitchBot, but I am looking at creating a video on SwitchBot devices in the near future, and I'll make sure to take that one with me. Now, SwitchBot you might know about from their little robots with a little finger that can click on or off traditional lighting, your kettle, your coffee machine. There's a lot of different applications for them. So you should check them out if you're interested in a little robot like that. And of course, you can add them and connect them to Homey and then have them integrated with your flows. Now, there's a reason that I'm not showing off all the flows possible with motion sensors, because there's a lot you can do. They make great triggers for flows when you're entering a certain room, or they double as great security measures when you're away from home and may want to make sure that, well, there's no activity in your home. And that reminds me, you should go check out my video on zone activity. This will explain how zone activity works with Homey and how you can use sensors like contact sensors or motion sensors to trigger different flows based on zone activity. The great thing with that is zone activity, well, basically measures if a zone is active or not. And it's not based on whether a contact alarm turns on or turns off, but rather it just looks at the overall activity and you can set up timers based on the activity to have other things happen. So when the zone is inactive, you turn off the lights, you set the temperature down, those kind of things. So it makes it really intuitive and easy to use. So if you're interested in that, I'll add a link in the top right or go down in the description and you'll find the video link there. Now, let me know down in the comments what your favorite contact sensor is out of this bunch, or perhaps I've missed one on the market. Let me know about that. If you guys have preferences or you say, hey, this one's great, love to share that with the community and other viewers watching the video. So let me know. I'll see you guys in the next video.